Hey guys, welcome to Lifting Linux, where open source meets real world testing. This video is a little different. What you're about to watch originally went up on my main channel, Elevated Systems, but I'm re-uploading it here for my Lifting Linux audience who might have missed it because it sets the stage for what's coming next. DreamQuest has officially launched the retail version of their Linux mini PC, and I'll be doing a full hands-on review of that finalized model right here on Lifting Linux in the next video. By revisiting the prototype, we'll also get to see which suggestions they actually took from both me and from the comments the audience left. Did our feedback shape the final product? Leave your thoughts below and next week we'll find out just how close you were to predicting what DreamQuest would do. As a little teaser, I think you'll all be just as surprised as I was by the direction they went with their choice of Linux distros. But that's next week. For now, here's the full background on how this mini PC got started. And today, I've got a little something different on the desk. DreamQuest reached out and sent over their Intel N100 mini PC, which is currently sold as a Windows-based system. But here's the thing, they didn't want a traditional review. Instead, they asked me to evaluate how well this mini PC works within the Linux operating system. They're planning on launching a dedicated Linux mini PC, and this model is their top candidate for the job. Now. DreamQuest didn't sponsor this video. Y'all are my only sponsors. As someone always trying to expand the Linux community, I just thought it was a fantastic opportunity and I'm excited to bring y'all along for the ride while hopefully sparking some constructive conversation that could help the DreamQuest team fine tune their offering. I'll start by giving a quick rundown of the mini PC specs and features, highlight any hardware that might pose a challenge for Linux. From there, I'll install Linux to see how it performs right out of the box. If any issues pop up, I'll dig into how easy they are to fix. It's a short holiday work for me, so this will be a quick video, but there's plenty to unpack, so let's dive in. Starting off, let's talk about the most important spec, the price. This mini PC comes in at under $200, making it an appealing option for budget conscious buyers. For that price, you're getting an Intel N100, a 12th gen Alder Lake N CPU with four efficiency cores capable of a Mac frequency of 3.6 gigahertz and a configurable TDP as low as six watts. The DreamQuest Pro Plus is outfitted with 16 gigabytes of DDR4-3200 memory, which is the maximum supported by the N100. Storage wise, it comes with a 512 gigabyte NVMe M.2 SSD, while the SSD is from a manufacturer I'm not familiar with and lacks DRAM. That's not a deal breaker at this price point. Plus you get some solid upgrade options with a second M.2 SSD slot and a SATA expansion for additional storage. On the downside, the system uses an older Realtek Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4.2 adapter. This card popular in older HP laptops is likely fully upstreamed in Linux, so compatibility shouldn't be an issue. However, in terms of both network speed and seamless Linux support, I would like to see something like an Intel AX210 included instead. Now let's check out the IO and expandability. On the front, there's a power button with an LED ring, which doubles as a fingerprint reader. I'll be interested to see if the biometric sensor is supported on Linux. Around the back, you'll find a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, USB 3.2 type C port with DisplayPort alt mode, one DisplayPort, two HDMI 2.0 ports, dual gigabit ethernet ports, and the 36 watt DC input. On the left side, there are four USB 3.2 type A ports and a micro SD card reader. The USB-C port allows for up to four display outputs, but the Intel N100 maxes out at just three displays, each with a maximum resolution of 4K at 60 Hertz. I'll definitely need to test how well multi-monitor support works in Linux, so stay tuned for that. Now, the retail model they sent over comes with Windows pre-installed, so I quickly set it up and dove into the device manager to check for any surprise hardware configurations or third-party drivers that might raise a red flag. The audio hardware is basic Realtek, and the same goes for the Wi-Fi adapter. No surprises there. However, the fingerprint sensor caught my attention. While it seems to use generic Windows drivers, 
And it's not a model I'm personally familiar with, so it'll be interesting to see how it performs, especially when we switch over to Linux. And not five minutes is all I need in Windows, so it's time to plug in my Ventoy drive and get Windows replaced with Linux. Now, this will most likely be the most debated part of this entire video, but the distro DreamQuest is going with is Ubuntu LTS. Now, personally, I would go with Debian. Debian shines when you want a no-nonsense, ultra-stable environment without frequent updates, corporate ties, or snap packages. However, its user-friendliness might not quite be as polished for complete newcomers as Ubuntu. Ubuntu is also a good choice for less experienced Linux users. It's built on Debian, it's stable, user-friendly, and requires minimal setup. You'll have a fully functional desktop pretty much the moment you power on the mini PC. Most Linux apps target Ubuntu first, so office tools, coding software, or lightweight games are just a click away. Plus, Canonical's five-year security updates keeps the system safe without constant maintenance. And the number one factor in its favor, Ubuntu's massive community. If you ever get stuck, solutions are out there, usually written for beginners. You don't really have to be a Linux guru to solve common issues quickly and easily. So the bottom line, Ubuntu is perfect for entry-level hardware and newbie users. It's reliable, supports everything you're likely gonna need, and is less likely to give you headaches down the road. So let's get Ubuntu 2404 LTS installed. I loaded the ISO onto my Ventoy drive and booted up the mini PC. I selected the Ubuntu 2404.1 ISO and launched the Ubuntu live environment. The first thing I tested was connecting to Wi-Fi and it worked flawlessly, no hiccups. That means the necessary drivers for the Realtek Wi-Fi adapter are upstreamed and ready to go. From there, I went through the super simple installation wizard. I stuck with the default installation since the Intel APU doesn't need third-party drivers. I wiped the Windows partition and set up Ubuntu to use the entire SSD. The installation process was quick and simple, and after a reboot, the mini PC automatically reconnected to Wi-Fi. I ran a quick system update and started exploring. Ubuntu 2404 currently uses Linux kernel 6.8, which isn't bleeding edge, but is more than up to date for this mini PC. Intel's 12th gen Alder Lake processors like the N100 introduced a hybrid architecture with performance P and efficiency E cores. Proper task scheduling for this architecture, particularly leveraging the E cores, has been supported since Linux kernel 5.18. Ubuntu 2404 LTS also incorporates modern user space components like SystemD version 255.4, which is built to take full advantage of kernel 6.8 features. This combination ensures efficient task management and energy optimization for the N100 processor. In simple terms, Ubuntu 2404 LTS unlocks the full potential of this mini PC, delivering optimized task scheduling and better energy efficiency. To put it to the test, I ran a quick Geekbench 6 benchmark and the results were impressive. The mini PC scored higher than what I typically see from N100 systems running Windows 11. Honestly, not a huge surprise, but that's still great to see. Not everything is perfect in the first hiccup is the fingerprint reader. While Ubuntu does include all the necessary drivers and packages for biometric devices, and I double checked that everything was installed and activated, the fingerprint reader just wasn't recognized by the operating system. It showed up in the hardware list, but didn't work in the user settings or even when I tried to manually enable it. Unfortunately, this device simply isn't Linux supported. Now, including hardware that doesn't work on a PC you're marketing as Linux compatible isn't ideal, but honestly, I don't see much value in a fingerprint reader on a desktop mini PC, especially at the sub $200 price point. But still, I need your input. Would you use a fingerprint reader on a desktop Linux PC? Should DreamQuest try sourcing a Linux supported model or would it be better to ditch the fingerprint reader altogether? Let me know in the comments below. Next up, multi-display support. While the mini PC does run up to three displays as advertised, 
Things get messy when mixing resolutions and more importantly, refresh rates. For my test setup, I used a 4K 60 Hertz display, a 1440p 144 Hertz display, and a 1080p 60 Hertz USB-C display. The 1080p monitor was connected directly to the USB-C port, while the larger displays were tested on both HDMI and display ports. The good news is, all three displays worked. I could extend them and their configurations were retained after reboot. I even streamed three separate videos at different resolutions without any stutters or lag. However, refresh rate handling was a bit off. Both 60 Hertz display performed fine. The 144 Hertz monitor couldn't hit its full refresh rate when all three displays were connected. It didn't drop to 60 Hertz, but hovered somewhere in between. With just two displays connected, the 144 Hertz display was able to hit its full refresh rate. This isn't entirely surprising. Mixed resolutions and refresh rates have been a long-standing issue on Linux, though improvements have been made, particularly with Wayland, which GNOME uses, it's also worth noting the hardware limitations here. Asking the N100 to drive three high resolution, high refresh rate displays is a big ask. Realistically, this tier of hardware is better suited for just two displays max. Bluetooth compatibility is another minor issue. The mini PC uses a Bluetooth 4.2 adapter, which generally works with newer Bluetooth versions but not always the other way around. For example, my Bluetooth 5.3 Bose speaker connected flawlessly with excellent audio quality. But my Bluetooth 5.0 earbuds connected with poor and inconsistent sound. This isn't a Linux issue, it's just a limitation of the older Bluetooth standard. And this brings me to my top suggestion for DreamQuest. Upgrade the Wi-Fi module to an Intel AX210. That gives you Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3, plus full upstream Linux support since kernel 5.11. It's really a no-brainer. I've been using the AX210 in all my Linux builds since 2021, and it's been rock solid. Before that, the AX200 was my go-to, and I've never had a single issue with either. Now for the good news. Everything else worked perfectly. Audio over HDMI, DisplayPort, and USB-C to the displays was flawless. The Realtek audio on the 3.5 millimeter jack worked without a hitch, and I even tested my son's gaming headset. The mic input worked without any quick fixes needed. The USB 3.2 ports delivered solid real-world speeds. The micro SD card reader was fully functional, and the dual gigabit Ethernet ports are also a nice touch. As a dedicated Linux desktop, the DreamQuest Pro Plus is an almost perfect candidate. The price point is spot on, especially for less tech savvy users who just want to dip their toes into Linux. Having a system you can buy with Linux pre-installed and ready to go definitely breaks down one of the biggest barriers to entry. Because let's be real, Windows became the dominant OS because Microsoft aggressively made sure it was pre-installed on virtually every home and office PC for the past 30 years. On the hardware side, my only suggestions are ditch the fingerprint reader and upgrade the Wi-Fi adapter. Software-wise, I think Ubuntu is the ideal choice for this system. Beyond the reasons I've already mentioned, there's also the fact that DreamQuest will need to support customers as they adapt to a Linux desktop. While I don't pretend to know all the legal intricacies of selling and supporting hardware with Ubuntu pre-installed, I do know that Canonical offers dedicated support for Ubuntu. DreamQuest could potentially route Ubuntu-specific issues directly to Canonical, though I'm not sure what that process looks like. Either way, DreamQuest, you'll need to have a solid plan for this because selling a Linux PC, especially on platforms like Amazon, will inevitably mean a spike in customer support requests. I mean, these will range from users with legitimate issues like peripheral hardware compatibility to customers who are just completely baffled to why Windows doesn't look or work the way they're used to. So be ready for that uptick. Anyway, that's my two cents on this potential Linux mini PC, and I've already shared them with DreamQuest, but here's the real reason I made this video. 
I'm interested in hearing your opinions and so is Dream Quest. They're watching, so drop your thoughts in the comments below. Now, most of my Linux audience is like me, experienced enough to buy a mini PC that meets our specs and install our distro of choice and just <laughs> make it work, but I'd still love your input. Validate or challenge the points I've made. Your experience could add valuable insight to the conversation. And for the Linux newbies or the Linux curious out there, I especially want to hear from y'all. Is an affordable entry-level mini PC with Ubuntu pre-installed something that could help you get started? Is it something you'd consider buying? Let me know why or why not. That wraps up the look back at DreamQuest Linux mini PC prototype. Hopefully it gave you a solid sense of where this project started and what challenges it had to overcome. Don't forget next week, I'll be diving into the final retail version and we'll see what changes they've actually made based on all the feedback. In the meantime, if you got thoughts on this project or if you think I should move some of my other still relevant Linux content from my main channel over here to lifting Linux, let me know in the comments. I'm always looking for ways to make this channel more useful and focused for the Linux community. If you found this helpful, hit that like button. If you're into Linux hardware, open source, or just making cool stuff work, subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.